you guys ever had the experience where like you're practicing, 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 and then you go to actually like play with people and all the stuff that you've been working so hard, it doesn't seems to seems like it's not at your fingertips. I often will write little etudes to help connect th those things. Cause sometimes I feel like, you know, my brain is some kind of file cabinet and there's a folder where it's like, okay, stuff I've been practicing is in this folder. And then this is like some music I had to learn for a gig is in this folder. And I want to get things more collated so that I have access to all this stuff. So the thing that's been helpful for me over the years is to try to write etudes and the etudes could either be things that again, I'm just going to work on in practice room, or sometimes I try to write actual tunes that I could play with people. And that actually becomes super fun because then you're taking something that you, you've been fascinated by for a, a day or a week or a month or whatever, and, and you're, sh you're sharing it. You're making it a piece of music that everybody can play. I wrote a, a comping study in three parts for a jazz tune called uh, Straight No Chaser which is a, a blues tune by Thelonious Monk. It's a 12 bar blues in B flat. You might recognize it if I play it. So I don't know if that rings a bell, but that's the melody to Straight No Chaser. The first etude that I wrote is a three-parter. The first phase is just to play shell chords and to try to voice lead so that we can keep all the comping in one area. A shell chord voicing uh, is a chord voicing with the root on the bottom and just two other notes. So shell chords are always gonna have the root on the bottom and the other two notes would be the seven, and the third. And it could be a different kind of quality. That's a dominant seven quality. It could be major seven quality. It could be a minor with a six or minor with a seven or minor with a major seven. So you see what I'm doing? The root is constant. The seven could be major seven or flat seven. The third could be major or minor. And just, just from those uh, kind of moving possibilities, you've got a lot of different chords right there. Now these chords are not, they don't have colorful tones like ninths or thirteenths or anything like that. They're just the real kind of bones of what a chord can be. So it's just, en just enough information, but uh, no more than that. And they're really useful when you're accompanying somebody because they leave room for that whoever you're accompanying to make choices in the moment as we do in jazz. They might want to play a nine. They might want to play a flat nine. They might want to play a 13 or a flat 13 or any other kind of note. And you're, you're not roping them into a certain kind of harmony when you play shell chords. There's really two forms that are common. There's root on the sixth string in which case you'd have the seven would be on the fourth string and the third would be on the third string. And then you could have root on the fifth string. And then in that case, you'd have the third on the fourth string and seventh on the third string. And that's really just has to do with the shape of most people's hands, kind of, it just sits well. And also um, the kind of nature of harmony is that when you've got this really low bass, it's nice to have a little gap in the bottom. So you're not going right up from the, the root to the third in that register, which is a little bit cloudy sounding, right? So again, if the root is on the sixth string, we skip and it'll go root seven, three. And if root is on the fifth string, it's easier and more sonorous to go root three, seven. So I'm going to play it in time. One, two, three. Four. I changed on beat four there because that's how this monk tune goes, but we're now on 
bar six, back to B flat seven, this would be bar seven, bar eight, bar nine is F seven for two bars, hold on it, and then back to B flat seven for two bars, and no turnaround there, just playing very straightforward chord voicing. So that's the level one of this etude. What is the thing that I'm trying to work on when I, when I wrote this etude? So it's, it's really two things. One is to break apart maybe some of the grips that I go to all the time and just break them down to their really most basic elements and then rebuild from there. So trying to kind of forget about typical chord vocabulary and instead starting with shells and rebuilding from there, which makes me a little more mindful of what notes we add because the second phase is going to be uh, adding one note to each of the shells. So we start to get a little bit more harmony. In the second phase, all we're going to do is take the shell voicings and convert them from three note shapes to four note shapes. So on B flat seven, we're gonna add the fifth, which is here on the second string. On E flat seven, we're gonna add the ninth, which is the same note, it's the F. And then when we go to F seven, we'll again keep the F on top. What I was going for in choosing these extensions was a common tone with the F on top. When you are playing chords behind somebody, and you keep a common tone on top, uh, it helps them feel freer because you're setting, you don't have to discuss it. If they've got ears, they'll hear what you're doing. You're kind of setting a ceiling and they know like, okay, if I improvise over that and I go way below that F, I'm gonna be getting into the chord territory. But as the improviser, maybe if I do things In that upper octave, we're gonna not have as much risk of getting in each other's way. It also can make you think more creatively about your chord choices when we get into level three. What I wanted to do was get much more chromatic, much more colorful, while still keeping that F note on top, three, four. I just put a little stinger chord at the end because that's a, a chord that Monk used in this tune. This comping etude is based on Monk. So set some parameters, set two or three parameters that you're really interested in, in exploring and write a piece of music that you can use to get more into that. So the, the, the parameters could be harmonic, melodic, rhythmic, form, shape. Um, emotion, texture, dynamic. A lot of the etudes that I write are just eight measures long. But if I write something that's music, it sticks. And that was that's really like what I said from the beginning. The whole point is take stuff that's only ever going to live on your music stand and get it into your hands, into your ears, onto your fretboard. So that's really the big idea.